Hey everyone and welcome back to the garden on another grey and windy day. Kind of getting used to them now really, but it'd be nice for some September sun, fingers crossed anyway. But one thing I was thinking about earlier, when it's June, no one says it's nearly July, and when it's July, it's never, oh it's nearly August. But as soon as it gets to August, it's, oh it's nearly September, autumn's rolling in, and now we're at the back end of August, it really nearly is September. Outside, in the real world, outside the garden, the leaves are no longer bright green. They're slowly fading to a darker green. There's more and more browns coming in. But here in the garden, there's more colour than ever. And if you grow these kinds of bold, tropical plants, that colour can keep going right until the first frost. So in today's video, I want to look at some of the plants that I've used to bulk this garden up this first year and to absolutely pack it with as much colour as I possibly can. So hopefully you can see from those clips in the garden behind me, there's a lot of summer colour going on. And this is the garden's first summer, so I'm especially pleased with how well these plants have performed. And you don't have to have an entirely tropical or jungle garden to appreciate what these plants can offer. I think any kind of garden, whether you've got a cottage style garden, maybe a really sleek modern garden, it doesn't matter what the style is, some of these plants can really extend the season and push that colour right on through these sort of late summer into autumn months. And I think it's great in any kind of garden where you usually have those traditional summer plants, they do the thing in May, June, July and start to go downhill. So a few of these plants, some of the gingers like the one behind me there and the cannas, they're absolutely great for pushing that season on and having these zingy colours in your garden for months to come. So in recent videos, I've looked at how to grow hardy gingers, such as the Hedicium gardnerianum behind me. It's a fantastic plant, one I've grown for several years. It's a very strong grower, it's got beautiful exotic foliage, and these amazing fragrance flowers as well. So that's definitely one that I appreciate here in the summer garden. As well as that, in my last video, one of the plants that I've chosen that's really grown well for me this year is Salvia amistad. Again, check that video out if you want to learn more about that. But in today's video, I want to look at the other flowering plants. Those that are in the borders behind me, that really help pack it out that give that lush jungle feel. These are plants that I've mentioned in previous videos, maybe ones I bought as plug plants that I've needed to give a progress update on for some time now, or they're ones that I just haven't touched on that have been in the garden, but I thought now it's a time to show them off and hopefully you'll actually want to try them in your garden next year. So the first plant I want to feature is this one here, bobbing around in the wind behind me. It's Canna Russian Red. And why is it such a good canna? Well, firstly, it's a very strong grower. It's one of the taller cannas, and even this year, it's the first year this one's been planted out in the grounds, and it's in quite a shady spot as well, and it's over seven foot tall. It's flowering already in August, so we're not having to wait too late for the flowers, and there's plenty more flowers, but it's waiting to come out. So it's a very strong grower, and from a small bit of rhizome, it bulks up quickly as well. So it's one of those plants, that if you buy a small bit now, in just a couple, maybe three years, you can have a really impressive clump of it. And when this plant really gets going, when it's in the right spot with plenty of sun, a rich soil, plenty of water and feed in summer, it gets absolutely massive. And it can definitely hold its own against other banana plants like your Inseti, Musa Basju. It really has that tropical vibe. And it's not just the flowers, you get this beautiful sort of maroon green foliage through the year as well. Yours might not get eaten by slugs and snails as much as mine. But it's a cracking plant even before it flowers. And when it does flower, those flowers that are so bright and zingy, they definitely fit here in the tropical garden. 
I know cannas aren't the perfect plants and there's issues like canna virus and also in years like this one with a really cold start to summer they can take a while to get going but somehow every year come mid-August they're five or six foot tall covered in flowers and as each individual flower fades away there's another one coming to replace it so they're absolutely fantastic plants you get a lot of foliage and a lot of flower for your money and they don't take up a lot of valuable space to overwinter either if you want to know more about growing cannas then check out my video canna musifolia up there I've got a video about how to grow that particular foliage canna, which is this one here. However, the care tips are pretty much any canna. They're all the same and they all respond to pretty much a lot of everything during the summer. It's a good rich soil, a lot of water and a lot of feed. But now let's look at another plant that also seems to thrive in those conditions. The next plant I want to feature is this one here, which is a dahlia called Bohemian Spartacus. And if you're new to dahlias, there's so many varieties available. You can get shorter grown ones, tall ones. Potentially this one could have been a bit taller, but some idiot forgot to stake it about a month ago and it's sort of grown on a bit of a slanted angle. But it's still got these amazing, beautiful flowers. And dahlias are a plant that once they start flowering, they just keep going till the frost. The important thing with dahlias is that you deadhead them so as each individual flower starts to fade get rid of it and there'll be plenty more to come. So this one is not the only type of dahlia that I grow and it's definitely not the only one that I'd recommend but it's one that I tried for the first time this year. I'm really pleased that I like the size of the flowers and the colours as well. They're really rich flowers and they're definitely a staple part of the late summer autumn garden. One of the flowers snapped off in the wind so I brought it to show you and as you can see it's a big flower and it's got these really rich reds and yellows and that's one of my tips to creating a sort of late summer border with real impact or if you're adding flowers to an exotic garden to go in between the foliage if you choose bright colors like the reds the yellows oranges deep purples there's really rich colors those can really add to it and at this time of year you're getting something that really stands out from the drab greens and browns outside of your garden so personally i'm a big fan of rich dailies like this i know dailies in general they weren't very fashionable for a long time but they suddenly come back again in a big way and it's not just in tropical gardens a lot of dahlias that fit in perfectly well with a cottage garden maybe you might like some of the oranges and pinks in a garden like that or even a really modern garden i can see some of the pom-pom dahlias the really small ones fitting in absolutely perfectly so they're another great plant and they're another plant that doesn't take a lot of care to look after in winter so all you do is either before the last or before the first frost should i say or just after them when the foliage has started to blacken you dig up the tubers carefully and keep them in either a tray or a pot of quite dry compost or coir some kind of peat free substitute like that keep them on the drier side you definitely want them to be drier than canners over winter and then come spring again all you do is pot them up around march time i do it personally start to water them keep them somewhere frost free and with that extra heat in the polytunnel they really get going and by the middle of summer again they're full of flowers and ready to go so they're fantastic plants the foliage maybe isn't quite as spectacular as the cannas but the flowers more than make up for it the next plant i want to feature are these amazing brugmantia here with these really long trumpet like flowers and firstly to clear a couple of things up something that's called angel's trumpet doesn't really fit in with my vision of a tropical garden and also anything with sort of white and pale pink flowers again it doesn't really fit in with that sort of rich colored tropical theme i've just described but i think these plants just for how exotic the flowers look they certainly deserve the place here and these plants i bought them from lidl back in may at 1.99 each so already in the first year they're putting a decent amount of height and they're already starting to get a few flowers with plenty more to come they're also fragranced as well you can get some varieties with a really strong fragrance these ones are more subtle but it's definitely noticeable these brugmansia they are a tender plant so what i'll be doing is dig them up before the first frost putting them in pots and putting them somewhere frost free for the duration of winter so here my only option is a polytunnel which i've got a small heater in just to keep above freezing on those really cold nights so with these only being young plants it's a bit of a chance if they're larger then they're definitely tougher plants you can actually trim them right back to the woody growth and they've got a good chance of making it through winter especially if you've got a heated greenhouse or somewhere warmer to keep them like a shed or garage that goes next to your house you should be absolutely fine then but either way i hope they make it because next year they'll have even more flowers they grow very quickly and when you see a mature one of these covered in flowers it just looks absolutely made up the sort of ratio of flower sleeves is absolutely incredible so it's a plant that didn't cost me a lot of money and worst case if they don't make it through winter i will be buying some more next spring it's not the color that i would have chosen and i think the color is completely random with these little ones at least anyway but i'm definitely glad i added them to the garden this year and i'll certainly be working more in next year 
those first three plants then, they've definitely got a touch of the tropical or the exotic about them. Certainly something a little bit different. And here I grow them with bananas and bamboos behind me, but if you've got a garden of more conventional plants, these will definitely fit in. And at the end of the season, once most of your summer plants, like the daylilies, have been and gone, these are the plants that will carry that colour going right until the first frost. And we're not far away from Lincoln here. I remember driving through there a couple of years back and I could see dahlias absolutely covered in flowers in mid-November. Obviously that doesn't happen every year and it relies on quite a mild start to winter, but you certainly get a lot of flower for your money. But if you want even more flower for your money, and you don't have somewhere to overwinter plants like these, then I've got a couple more options for you. These ones can be grown from seed. So the first one I want to mention, it's none other than the standard nasturtium, one of the easiest flowers to grow from seed, and great if you've got kids, you want to encourage them to grow something. Obviously, they do get eaten a bit by slugs and caterpillars, but it doesn't really matter, and in some ways, they're a sacrificial plant to stop the other bigger leaves getting eaten. But I think they're a cracking plant. I've used them here as a filler plant. So in this area here, surrounded by other variegated foliage, like this kind of Stuttgart, these just form like a lovely carpet of leaves. And with these amazing orange jewel like flowers, they certainly pop out and fit in with the dahlias and cannas around them. The next flower I want to feature, again, it's an annual that can be grown very easily from seed, keep it somewhere frost free, is this here, which is an amaranthus. And as you can see, they've got these amazing pinky purple sort of trails of flowers, and they're fitting perfectly with the salvia amistad above it. So they're a fantastic looking plant. They're not something I'd immediately look at as jumping out in the border, that belongs more to the big canners and stuff growing in the middle. But these certainly fit in with a tropical theme and they're a great way of adding punchy colour around the other taller plants. They're also very easy to grow from seed, keep them somewhere frost free. And I get them to around three inches tall, plant them out during May after the last frost. And they soon get to around two to three foot tall with these amazing pinky purple flowers. So they're another one, easy to grow, definitely recommended. It's starting to get dark now, so it's time to bring today's video to a close. So those are just five plants that you can add to your garden to really bring that late summer colour. I know traditionally, a lot of sort of normal, traditional gardens, they flower early in the year and they start to wind down come autumn, when the autumn flowering plants take over. Whereas a tropical garden, it takes a while longer to get going, it only really starts in sort of early May at the very earliest, potentially even early June. But come the back end of the year, it's a real crescendo of flowers and all kinds of bright, strong colours. But there's no reason why you can't combine the two and have a few of these tropical looking plants mixed in with more conventional planting. So hopefully you've enjoyed these plants and you want to try some out in your garden next year. Two of which can be grown very easily from seed and three do take a bit of looking after over winter but if you can do it they absolutely reward you and they'll keep getting bigger and better every summer to come. So thanks a lot for watching and if you want to know more about other plants I've got in the garden here and how I'm going to look after them over winter then subscribe. I've got loads more videos planned. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you all soon.